hey what's up everybody Isaac here with a Conqueror's Blade video and it has been quite a while but with the new scimitar weapon out I thought maybe it's time to make another video so if you would like to see more Conqueror's Blade stuff hit the like and leave a comment below if enough people want to see more maybe I'll make more Conqueror's Blade stuff but I figured it's time to do some testing and figure out what is going to be the best builds best combos and are you gonna put your attributes full strength full agility well right off the bat we have this big leap and slash massive damage right so probably gonna go full strength since strength scales slashing well we do have a couple of other abilities and well comes to find out you use the scorpion snare it's a piercing damage and well that actually does even more damage than your leaping slash got a lot longer cooldown though so well maybe we want to go piercing then right well hmm what are the other damages well the R it's blunt but it's got an 18 second cooldown and it's not a crazy damage dealer so we probably aren't worried about taking this one into consideration when we decide what we're gonna roll but how about the trap prey the ultimate skill here well, this one is piercing, and it's your ultimate, so well, maybe we want to go full agility, because piercing, agility, right? Scorpion, snare, agility, right? Well, obviously, we do also have the auto attack, which I believe should be a slashing. So, it's kind of like we got two slashing, and we have two piercing, but... We also have another attack, which is piercing. And this is actually going to be potentially your most important attack of all, your right click. And well, why is that? Well, it is piercing, so I'm saying that's your most important ability, so probably gonna go agility, right? Well, not necessarily. But first things first, let's talk a little bit about combos. So, if we read here we're gonna see some really important stuff so first off just talking about the damage yada 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 and it's piercing but yada 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 extra effect upon hitting enemy reduces slashing defenses by five percent for two seconds it's important to know because if you can hit them with your leap and slash within the next two seconds well it's gonna do an extra five percent damage but that's not a crazy amount so it's not like a do or die you must get that slash in because well an extra five percent isn't just a ridiculously crazy amount but extra effect to every time leap and slash sandstorm so leap and slash or sandstorm or trap and prey are used cooldown is reduced by two seconds so that's pretty huge so if we hit him with scorpion snare and then we hit him with leap and slash well that's two seconds off of scorpion snare cooldown and also if we happen to use sandstorm another two seconds so they start adding up we use trap prey another two seconds so they start adding up but where they really start to add up is when stinging strike hits an enemy cooldown is reduced by one second well that's less so how is that so good crazy well that is our right click and if we're close enough we're gonna hit them with all three attacks so you can actually get a little bit of a decent distance away and still hit them with all three when I do the leap if you press s and you right click you do a jump and a leap back but it must only throw one knife yeah it only throws one which it does come in handy for an escape but it's not going to be crazy for the reduction it's not going to be crazy for damage but you know if we're close enough that we can hit him with all three knives and you can see we can actually get a decent distance away to still hit him with three we only hit him with two there and only one there so two two oh, i was hitting three at this distance before is it because we're on the side angle maybe maybe that's it we can see two there three there so we're this far away and we're still hitting them with three pretty consistently so that damage stacks up pretty heavily and it's also well let's go back to what we were talking about 
Stinging Strike hits an enemy, cooldown is reduced by one second. But we hit him with all three knives, and well, that's three seconds. But we do two quick second. We do a second follow-up attack with a quick. So the first one we throw it one way, and then we throw it back. That's six. That's six seconds. So we hit our Q, and then we hit him with a couple of quick. Just like that, that cooldown is just deleted. So they're stunned, and we throw a bunch of knives at them, and we have our ability back to stun them again. We throw a bunch of knives at them, stun them again, throw a bunch of knives at them. But I mean, that alone isn't enough to keep them stunned completely forever. So we hit them with our first stun, then we hit them with a couple knives, and then we hit them with our leap and strike, because that stuns them for another 0.5 seconds. And then we can spam right click, leap and strike again while we're waiting for our cooldown to come off, but our cooldown's good. We leap and strike, spam right clicks. And you can see that our leap and strike it also comes off cooldown when we so if we look here every extra effect every time sting strike hits an enemy cooldown is reduced by one second so it works for leap and slash as well so pretty nuts we can hit him with leap and slash and basically right right click so you kind of want to in my opinion you kind of want to gonna want to maybe i can get these words out sometime today but you're kind of going to want to spam both of these attacks. Your right attack and your leap and slash. And that is because the leap and slash is going to stun. And your right click is going to help bring the cooldowns off of the big one, the scorpion snare. And it's also going to bring the cooldown off of leap and slash. And so the leap and slash hits for like 34k. But the scorpion snare, I was getting that to hit for like 5k with my build. So... So it's not as simple as we want to hit mostly with slash. It's not as simple as we want to hit mostly with piercing. Honestly, most of our damages are probably going to be more piercing. But we are also dealing slash damage. So it's not as simple as we want to only maximize piercing or we only want to maximize slash. But the convenient thing of all of this, I tested full agility. I tested full strength. But... I also tested 50-50 and what do you know the 50-50 build either hit equally as hard or harder than both of the other builds in each and every selection every single different attack the 50-50 build either hit harder or equally the same as any of the skills in full agility or any of the skills in full strength so my conclusion as of now obviously this does need more testing but you are potentially going to want to run 50 50 on this weapon this might be the first weapon that not only is viable to run 50 50 but that might be your best bet so go ahead give that a shot test it out some roll 50 50 half into strength half into agility and well i'm going to leave this little battle here and we'll talk a little bit more about that why does it work out in such a way well that is because of penetration so it is going to vary depending on what kind of a weapon roll you get i got pretty lucky and got a pretty darn good roll not the most op best possible one you could get but very strong really good slashing damage pretty good piercing damage then plus 15 strength so that means i'm going to do extra slashing damage with that 15 strength and i'm going to get a little bit of piercing penetration so the very best you could roll in my opinion would be piercing damage slashing damage piercing armor penetration slashing armor penetration or the next best would be piercing damage slashing damage strength agility and something else that would be plenty good is if you could roll like piercing penetration, slashing penetration, then, you know, one or the other of slashing or piercing. But at the end of the day, one thing you're going to want to pay attention to is, well, we are just, we're going to reset our points. We're going to use an item. Unfortunately, right now I'm rolled full agility. But we're going to use an item to see where our base stats get us. So we do have a gold scimitar in here but the additional stats they do not apply 
So let's see where we are. So you can see right here, our base stats, 13, 13, 12, 12. So this is why the 50-50 roll ends up being so, so usable, because we have really low penetration to start off with on this weapon. So we don't start to do really good damage until we get the penetration up a little bit. And you can see the piercing and the slashing damage, they're both kind of mediocre as well. But as we, you know, start to add these up, you can see the numbers go up. And, well, we're just going to just start right. So if you want to add 10 at a time, you just shift and right left click and we're down to 12 so we're going to add 6 and we're going to add 6 so you can see we added 36 to each and so it's going to be these numbers plus and it's hard to say maybe you're going to be better off to go like one little bit more one little bit less but i think 50 50 is going to be pretty good because if you start going one little more, one little bit less, it's going to bring your piercing penetration up more, or it's going to bring your slashing penetration up more. And they're both very good, so honestly, I'm kind of banking right now that the 50-50 roll is going to be best, also depending on what kind of roll you get here. So if you get a roll that has you know crazy good slashing damage and then crazy good piercing armor penetration so both of those are you know like strength type rules whatever so we might want to put a little bit more into agility if we have that type of role but as of right now in regular seizures and territory war and that type of thing we don't get to use the bonuses we don't get to use the bonuses for another 13 days so that won't come into play except it will come into play in your death matches and rank battles which is super super annoying because at that rate to absolutely maximize max min your build that might mean you might have to reset for death match versus playing a regular siege versus playing territory battle versus playing in a rank battle so super ridiculous they need to let us reset for free or like 5k bronze or something make it able so we can play how we want when we want definitely will keep a lot more people excited to play if we can reset for free that's my opinion but anyways if you can get a role that has you know roughly half and half equal slashing damage equal piercing damage and even if they're not it's still going to be a strong role to just go 50 50 half into strength half into agility so we're going to go ahead and apply those points. We're going to take a look at what we got over here. And, you know, the piercing damage is a little bit stronger than the slashing damage. But that stuff doesn't apply here. I was just, uh, so it must just naturally have a little bit better piercing damage at the base. And then the piercing pen is a little less than the slashing pen. Well, I guess that could actually have to do with my ruins too. So, I'm not going to go super in-depth with my runes. I'll show you the runes that I've been playing with. What the heck, why not? So, on my hood, this is what I've been going with. I'm not saying this is going to be your absolute best build. Well, at an allied supply point, restore 2% health every second. This has actually been pretty handy. Increase maximum health by 3%, increase toughness by 5 points. You could definitely argue there might be some different ways you could go. You might say you should do the strength and toughness because you're straight damage. And, well, I'm just trying to maximize what I think is the most bang for your buck. You know, 5 points versus 2 points. An extra 2 strength or an extra 2 agility. It's not going to do crazy amount. You know, not that an extra 5 points of toughness is crazy either, but... It's something, not saying this is the absolute best build, but this is what I've been going with for this season so far. Increase max health by 3%, and I have been finding this, you know, go on a supply point and get some extra health when your health when your heal is on cooldown. Comes in pretty handy. So, what do we got on our chest piece? Increase stamina by 100 points. I think this one is pretty nice, pretty important. 
and we are using stamina with our right click so more than just running i do find this to be important you might not but i think it's good and i've been going with the armor just kind of once again the same type of thing you definitely could go with damage taken from soldiers reduced by seven percent but the thing is you know we are you know th this you could definitely go with this one but this is going to help increase our resistance to ranged and melee both thing is i mean we get close to something like stalwarts something anything like that shield maidens rangians were dead as a light armor but you could argue obviously several different one of these but stamina armor and then you have to take one more so definitely could just go with could go with this one if you wanted wouldn't be a terrible one to use but we'll just switch it to that for now just for fun and the foot one i've been using bandage can be used while moving cooldown is increased increased cooldown super annoying but this saves your life so many times and then bandage duration is reduced by 40 percent while healing the same amount this just kind of a no-brainer take it pretty annoying when you have lots of downtime trying to heal somebody interrupts your heal when it's taking too long and your heal is wasted so if you can heal faster all the better this is a no-brainer here and our hand piece we're using right now killing a hero increases your damage by three percent stack up to four times stacks reset on your death kills by units do not count and then increased damage dealt by two percent can't really go wrong with that you could say crit value you know you could do i would say two percent is probably more than i'm not sure i haven't really done the math and i haven't tested it maybe i should test it but i've just going been going with a straight two percent maybe i should test it but that's what i'm going with for now so and on the scimitar scorpion snare damage is increased by 10 percent slashing defense reduction is increased from five percent to ten percent and duration is increased by two seconds so that means for four seconds we're going to do an extra ten percent slash damage after the scorpion snare which is doing more damage so kind of a no-brainer stingy strike damage is increased by six percent and block break is increased so we are going to be using the stingy strike a lot so also very strong what are the other options here sandstorm now throws gravel during escape reducing the accuracy of range units yeah just compared to these two not gonna cut it so these two are kind of a no-brainer to me on the chain dart and scimitar so that covers that that covers kind of the build that i'm gonna have to suggest for now half into strength half into agility and that's what i'm finding is hitting the hardest and kind of comes into play all because of the penetration it has kind of not super high penetration to start off with but you know this piercing and slashing damage if you leave that down well if you just go into full strength it's only going to bring up one or if you only go into full agility it's only going to bring up the other one so 50 50 i tested every skill full strength full agility and 50 50 50 50 held its own or did stronger in every category as far as i could tell so do your own testing let me know what you found and let me know how you get along with the new weapon it's pretty crazy pretty strong a few things that feel a little bit glitchy about it but yeah feels a little bit overtuned to be honest with you obviously the thing is it's not going to be as good as some of the heavy heavy armor weapons you know when you're sticking yourself into a bunch of units when you're inside of you know a point rush inside of a death ball obviously light armor class you know it can't do some of the same abilities like a big short sword slam can be so it's definitely not something that you're going to replace having short swords on your team you know long swords got a pretty significant buff Polaxe, you know, it's still Polaxe. It's crazy strong with all its CC and its survivability with inside groups of units. So it definitely can't replace those classes, but it's kind of ridiculous when you're in the open ground, either tracking down a low hero or 
you know, just fighting in the open ground. So definitely crazy strong weapon. Give it a try. You know, honestly, go try a 50-50 build. Let me know how you like it. But that covers it. Hope you have a good one.